Math 1332, Chapter 2, Set Theory, Section 2.1, Introduction to Set Theory, Video 4, The Empty Set. I was noticing as I go from video to video that the board is getting dirtier and dirtier. At some point I'll pause and actually get some wet paper towels to clean it off really well, but for now. So far, we have defined what it means to be a set, to be an element of a set. We define some specific sets, special sets, the, uh, excuse me, natural numbers, even numbers, odd numbers, whole numbers, integers, rational numbers, real numbers, and in a backdoor way, we also kind of defined irrational numbers. And we've also looked at different ways to represent sets. But in this video, we're going to talk about one special set called the empty set. Uh, the empty set is exactly what it sounds like. What do you think it means for a set to be empty? Well, what is a set? It's a collection of objects. So if that set is empty, how many objects would you expect to be in it? Well, if this box were empty, it's not. Now it is. If this box were a set of markers and it's empty, how many markers are in it? None. The empty set, it's also called the null set. The empty set is the set containing zero elements. It is literally empty, it has nothing in it. There are two symbols for the empty set. One is literally an empty set in roster form. Let me open up a set, write everything it contains, which is nothing, and close it. But there's another symbol for the empty set you may have seen before. It looks like a zero with a diagonal slash through it. Both of these are symbols for the empty set, a set that contains nothing. Now, one reason we need a symbol for the empty set for theoretical purposes is what's called completion. Uh, we need to be able to represent the answers to some set problems which you haven't gotten to yet, but those answers will be the set is empty. And so it's kind of like why we had the number zero to represent the absence of quantity, among other things. But we can also just ask, is a set empty? So on the board I have four examples. Which of the following sets are empty? A the set of public aquariums that have piranhas, B, the set of all X's such that X is a living pterodactyl, C, the set of N's such that N is an element of capital E, remember those were the even natural numbers, and N is an element of capital O, the natural odd numbers, or the odd natural numbers, and D is the set containing the empty set. That's an interesting one. Well, let's take it one at a time. A, the set of public aquariums that have piranhas. To answer the question whether or not that set is empty, you need to ask yourself, is there an aquarium that would belong to that collection? Is there an aquarium that has piranhas? Now, I haven't been to every aquarium in the world, but I have been to one that does have piranhas. And because there exists at least one such aquarium, this set is not empty. Not empty. At least one aquarium. At least one such aquarium exists. Now, I haven't gone online to verify that there still exists an aquarium that has piranhas, but it's an aquarium, and I'm sure one of them has piranhas. If I were wrong, then that set would currently be empty. Set B, which is in set builder notation. The set of X's, so set X is a living pterodactyl. I'm assuming everybody knows a pterodactyl is a flying type of dinosaur. Pretty sure they're all dead. Pretty sure there are no living pterodactyls. On the presumption that there are no living pterodactyls, who knows in the future, Jurassic Park might come true. But for now, assuming that there are no living pterodactyls, this set would be empty. Namely because pterodactyls 
are extinct. Hence the word living, to make the set empty. What about set C? The set of n's such that n is an element of the even natural numbers and n is an element of the odd natural numbers. Can a number be both even and odd simultaneously? No. The even numbers are divisible by 2. The odd numbers are not divisible by 2. You can't be divisible by 2 and at the same time not divisible by 2. It's not Schrodinger's 2. If you get that joke, you watch more Big Bang Theory than we probably should. Um, but no, the set is empty. Because, and I don't know why I switch from colons to dashes. It's empty because no number is simultaneously even and odd. In the event that there's a very pure theoretical mathematician watching this video, I'm fully aware that we could define even and odd so that there would be one, but we're talking about even and odd in the traditional sense. You're an integer and you're either divisible by two or you are not. But what about this last set? The set containing the empty set. Is that empty? And when I say that, I mean the, the braces. Well, to be empty, then the braces would have to have nothing in them. But these braces do. It just so happens the thing in them is the symbol for the empty set. This set is not empty. And the easiest way to show something is not empty is to show that it contains an element. The only element in this set is that symbol. Now granted that symbol is the symbol for the empty set, but when I put it inside of something, then the something it is inside of is no longer empty. Think of it this way. Let's say this box is an empty set, and I'm gonna make another set by putting this box inside of it. Is the trash can empty? Nope. The thing in the trash can is, but the trash can itself is not. It's like the braces of the trash can, and the symbol in the middle is this empty box. So that one's kind of a tricky one because it looks like the empty set. It's the set containing the empty set, and therefore that set is not empty. There's an element in it. Other than that example, it's usually pretty trivial to determine whether a set is empty or not. You're not empty if you contain an element. You contain an element, you contain an element, neither of you were empty. They were non-empty, so to speak. These two sets did not contain any elements, therefore those two sets were empty. In fact, these two sets are equal. More about that in the near future. About sets being equal, you could probably figure out what it means, it's fairly intuitive.